that right now because many of you might find it distressing. Well, CNA spoke to witnesses who said there was a second round of gunfire later that evening. Here's what one protester who had been documenting events on Instagram Live told us. Nigeria is a dictatorship with a democratic face. And I think that is primarily to, to, to please the international community. It is our right to protest anything that we see and change that we demand. Well, those protests began as a movement against police brutality, but took a dark and violent turn, as we reported. Nigeria is now threatening to sanction CNN and denies that security forces shot live ammunition at protesters. Well, then I'll hear brought us that story after weeks of in-depth research and analysis by her and her team. And she joins us now from London. Nima, how has the Nigerian government responded? Well, our reporting, Becky, has triggered their first really significant response since the events of, the, of October 20th at Leki Tolgate. This is what the uh, government information minister, al Hajle Mohammed, had to say about our reporting. Like everyone else, I watched the CNN report yesterday. I must tell you that it reinforces the disinformation that is going around, and it is blatantly irresponsible and the poor piece of journalistic work by a reputable international news organization. CNN, which touted its report as an exclusive investigative report, sadly relied on the same videos that have been circulating on social media without verification. This is very serious, and CNN should be sanctioned for that. Of course, Becky, that is simply not true. We used uh, video and images that we were able to verify. We received them firsthand from contacts, witnesses, family members. We interviewed a family member uh, who had been searching for his brother for days at that point, weeks. We were able to at least help provide him with some closure, which the Nigerian federal authorities had not been able to provide. The, the press conference was contradictory, and during the conference, the minister said that the federal government was satisfied with the actions of the military and the police on the night of October 20th. That's actually ahead of the findings of its own judicial panel, and those that we're speaking to are incredibly worried about what that means for the findings of that panel. Does that not exert pressure? on the panel to exonerate members of the military and the police. Of course, all this is happening while people are still searching for loved ones. People are still grieving the ones they lost, and people are still no closer to answers, Becky. Now, now I spoke to the Lagos state governor in the aftermath of the uh, Leki protests and incident. Have a listen to some of what he told me at that time. How many people died at the Leki toll gate and who was responsible for those deaths? The number of deaths that we can attribute directly to the unfortunate, uh, very horrific, very condemnable incident of last week Tuesday at Leki were only two. Two dead bodies. Who ordered that peaceful protest at the Leki toll gate? Okay, uh, um, who ordered people to be shot? And which branch of security services carried out the shootings? It, it seems to me that there will be um, many military uniforms, right? It depicts that there are military uniforms, and so there will be military officers or, I mean, soldiers as it were. So you're saying that it was military officers who have ordered peaceful protests that's, to be shot at Lake Yeah, that's what Lake the pictures, Tolgate. yes. Well, that's... They were there. That's what the footage, I mean, that's what it shows. And this was ahead of the judicial hearing um, that is being promised. Um, and I asked the governor whether he was determined that there would be accountability. He said, yes. What do we know about the current status of those hearings? Well, that interview, Becky, we understand, sent shockwaves to the very highest level 
of Nigeria's government. And since then, federal authorities have backtracked. The, uh, the Brigadier Taiwu, who gave evidence to the judicial panel, said that the two deaths were deaths from blunt instruments and that those injuries were not sustained at the location at Leki Torge. And this is what we've seen. Different factions in the government are saying different things. And none of those people on the ground who are desperate for answers are receiving them. Even today, as the Minister of Information was carrying out that press conference, the coroner in Lagos put an ad in the newspapers, in the local press, asking for family members to come and try to identify bodies, even as the information minister in Abuja was denying that there had been any deaths. It's incredibly concerning for people in Nigeria, and frankly, in the international community, Becky, because it's, it, it worries them that there will be really any accountability. What you saw there, what you managed to extract from the Lagos state governor is the closest that any government official has come to admitting wrongdoing. And since then, we have reached out to Lagos state authorities and they have refused to give us any comment, Becky. Now, I'll give on the reporting. Now, thank you. And a reminder, in Nigeria, thousands of young people have been protesting against police brutality as part of a largely peaceful movement. It's called END SARS, and the SARS acronym uh, is one used for a certain uh, police squad, as it were. But on October the 20th, these protests turned deadly as the army and police moved in on unarmed civilians. The Nigerian army has called these allegations that it fired into the crowd, as you've heard, fake news, and told a judicial panel of inquiry that it did not shoot at any civilian, but... Nema's investigation can reveal that that is not true. This is Nema's report. For those of you who didn't see it last night, some of the images you are about to see may be disturbing. <laughs> Some are serving. 
Colombia. This one from 2005. Nigerian military sources verified to us that these are munitions that are currently in use by Nigeria's army. And in collaboration with the Balkan Investigative Reporting Network, we were also able to procure Serbian export documents, proving that Nigeria purchased weaponry from Serbia for almost every year between 2005 and 2016. The shooting continued past midnight. Eyewitnesses tell us it wasn't just the army. At this point, they say police arrived and opened fire. My head is broken. My leg is broken. Mm -hmm. And police are still shooting at us. If I don't make it through the night, let it be known. I died fighting mm -hmm. for freedom. So why were live rounds used at a peaceful process? Many family members of those still missing are asking that question as they hunt for answers or the bodies of their loved ones. Elisha's brother, Victor, was at the protest that night. Someone picked my brother phone and called me and said that my brother, Victor, so there is a monk of those people that was shot at Lucky Target. And I entered into the hospital and search. I did not see him. And we are trying, we are trying our best to just find him. But there is no way to find him. What we're about to show you is incredibly graphic, but it's also incredibly important. This is Elisha's brother, Victor. The data in this footage shows it was filmed at 1.04 a.m. at Leggy Tollgate. Elisha says he received a call about his brother's death around this time. This places Victor exactly at the location of the protest on the night witnesses say they were shot at. This is important because Nigerian authorities deny anyone was killed at the scene. Since this incident, CNN has contacted over 100 protesters and family members. They pointed their guns at us and they started shooting. We asked what they heard. When we had gunshots from behind the door. And felt. This wheel was shot and the bullet went through my back. Many are in hiding. Some have fled the country. CNN tried to share these findings with the Nigerian army, but received no response. Lagos state authorities would not comment on our reporting until they said a judicial panel of inquiry presents its findings. The wait for answers here continues. Nermal Barre, CNN, London. And a statement from CNN, I will read, and I quote, our reporting was carefully and meticulously researched, and we stand by it. Well, moving on, decades of US policy upended in